Hello guys, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. There is a message that I want to share with you guys and this message, it comes from a translation and it was sent to me by our dear brother. The message reads like this, Hello my brother, how are you? Can you please post my story as anonymous? My brother, I have stayed here in South Africa for a very long time. I came here to South Africa when I was only 15 years old and I started surviving by just living in the street and begging by the robots. And it happened that there was this other man who was a local. He then took me and he was a mechanic. To my surprise, he started teaching me how to become a mechanic. And this thing of us being mechanics, I think, I think that it runs in the family because even my grandfather, he was a mechanic and all of my father's brother, including my father as well, he was a mechanic. When they all passed away, we all became mechanics. So it runs in our bloodline, this thing of us becoming mechanics. I want to tell you what happened to me, why I ended up being here in South Africa at a very young age. My father, he was a mechanic. He had his own auto shop there in the capital city of our country, as well as his his brothers, they all had their auto shops. They were working as mechanics. But my father, he was the luckiest one because even when days were dry, my father always managed to find some customers. But his brothers, they began to feel so jealousy because of the way that my father was getting a lot of clients. So they decided to bewitch my father. Even though my father's brothers, they had tried to bewitch my father, but but the woman who had been protecting the whole family, it was my mother as well as my grandmother. Whenever she would come to the city, she would always scold my father's brother and she would say, you boys, you need to stop what you are doing. What you are doing is very evil. In this business that you are doing, when your father was still staying here in the city, he used to get his customers without using any charms because my father's brothers, they used to go and visit a lot of traditional healers. They were always using charms so that they can get their customers. But my father and my mother, even though my father, he used to drink beer. And whenever you would be drunk, you would keep on saying that God blessed me because I married a woman who knows how to pray, especially when he was drunk, he loved to read the Bible. So my mother always prayed. And that was why my father kept on getting a lot of customers. When my father's brothers saw that they could not be which my father and giving bad luck so that he cannot have a lot of customers and god was actually blessing him that was when they thought of killing him and yes they succeeded because one day they came and they took my father they pretended as if they just wanted to go and drink some beer just to hang around whilst they were having a small bry. My mother, it was like she was feeling that there was something that was going to happen, something bad. She tried to stop my father, but my father reasoned with my mother and said that there was this other car which he had been fixing, so he wanted to give it a road test. So at the place where they were supposed to go to, it is in, in an area that is called Zindoga Shopping Center. My father said that it was a good thing because he was going to give it a road test. My father and his brothers, they all got into the car. Then they went there to Zindoga. Then they started drinking. But these brothers of my father, they had planned something evil in their hearts because whilst they were drinking, and they were drinking that type of beer that is traditional beer but it is sold in the streets and when you are drinking this type of a beer usually men they drink from the same cup so we don't know how they managed to put the poison into that beer because this poison it only affected my father 
and after the death of my father everyone started blaming my mother and they said that if it was his brothers that placed the poison why didn't they die but we know that my father's brothers with all the things that they have been doing they were the only one who could have thought of such an evil thing my father he returned back home after he had dropped his brothers that was when he started complaining and he was saying that he was feeling severe pain in the stomach my mother woke us up because she was confused she didn't know what to do anymore so we rushed to this other house and at that house that is where the chairman of our ward was staying and we told him everything that was going on he then took his car and he rushed my father to the hospital my father died in paris unfortunately the doctors they could not save my father because the poison had damaged him severely and there was nothing that could be done my father died in the early hours of the morning after the death of my father when my father was still lying in the mortuary there at Paris hospital his brothers they started fighting for the few properties that my father had my father was not a rich man because in the city we didn't even have a house but we were renting a good cottage it was a three-roomed cottage and we had a lot of property i still remember that it was just few months after my father had placed a dstv on our small house so maybe this caused a lot of jealousy because back in those days it was a few people that had the satellite dishes on their houses so my father's brothers they started packing all of our belongings and they were saying that all of these things they were supposed to be returned back to the rural areas because after his burial as per our custom everything had to be divided amongst my father's relatives all those things they were loaded into a ud truck and they went whilst we were waiting for the body of our father to be released from the mortuary so that we can go back to the rural areas where my father was supposed to be buried after his body had been released by the mortuary that was when we went following behind our father's coffin and when when we arrived in the village everyone was just fighting because my father he had a lot of cattle what my father had been doing is that he was always buying cattle his idea was that if anything bad was going to happen to him this was going to be his insurance so that we can go to school my mother was supposed to sell those cattle little by little until we had finished our education but after his death then his sisters and his brothers they started fighting for the cattle and all of them they took them and they never gave my mother anything the reason as to why they never gave my mother any cattle it was because after the burial of my father a lot of people said that they wanted to rush back to the city so that they can work and then they had this other family meeting and once we were having that family meeting the men in the family they were seated on the side and the women on the other side then one of my uncles stood up and said to my mom it is time for you to point your finger at the man that you want to get married to and this is common in our culture if a woman loses her husband then she has to choose amongst her husband's brothers and then she will be married to her late husband's brother so my mom she then took this other small plastic dish that was just standing she then took this small plastic dish that had been placed in front of her so the man that she was going to give that small plastic dish was going to become a husband she then came to the place where i was sitting with my little brother and then she gave us that small plastic dish and she was saying that we were going to become her husband so since we were her children it was not possible for us to become her husband and then we were made to become a keeper like we were the ones that were going to become the men of the house my father's brother they didn't like this thing that had happened they started to accuse my mother of being a prostitute and they said that my mother was the reason why our father had passed away and my mom was the one who had poisoned our father their argument was that if we were the ones that placed the poison in the 
be a how come we didn't die so my mom she was then kicked out of the house and at that time we were staying in the village we then returned back to the city we started staying with my mom's little sister but she was married and she had small space at the place where she was renting so my mom then started working she was working as a maid life was really hard i watched my mother struggle i watched my mother dying because a year after my father had passed away then my mother just passed away even though they said that my father's spirit had avenged his death but as her children we knew that it was not because of our father's spirit that had avenged her death but we know that it was our relatives that had caused all of this we were left without having anyone to take care of us my sisters they returned back to the village where they started staying with our uncles and as for me since i was a little bit older i then started staying in the city just doing some odd jobs until i met this other man who said that he knew this other area and if i would go with him to south africa i was going to quickly found a job that is how i ended up being in south africa as for my sisters when they went to stay in the rural areas they started to hate me because my uncles i know that they were he was feeding them a lot of poisonous words and we stopped communicating with each other i had tried several times to communicate with them when i was here in south africa but each and every time they would always say words that were so toxic that i decided to give up on them even though i was still a young man but i understood what i wanted in life i stayed my brother for many many years here in south africa i then met this other woman who was from zim yes she was a little bit older than i was but when i looked at her i saw a woman who knew what she wanted in life and i then proposed love to her since i had never went back home at that time for many many years she encouraged me to go back home since zim was my home no matter what i had to go back home so she encouraged me and she told me that all the money that you are earning you need to do something with this money at least buy a piece of land since i didn't have any connections with any of my relatives anymore knowing that they are such toxic people i ended up buying this piece of land in the village from where that woman that i was once married to in her village and finally when me and her went back home to zim it happened that i came across one of my sister's child and he immediately recognized me and he knew that i was his uncle he then reported back to my sisters that i was now back home in zim and i had given him my numbers when i told them that i was building my house but at the area where my wife comes from they were really angry they managed to come there my brother and they caused a lot of commotion it was really embarrassing even though they had humiliated my wife calling her an old prostitute she said that she was going to stick by me we returned back to south africa and we continued living our life but a baby was not coming even though we had tried to go to those white garment prophets they told us that inside my wife's womb there was a child but it was a spiritual child then that prophet said that if a woman is pregnant can she fall pregnant again then we said no then that prophet said that since you have agreed that if a woman is pregnant she cannot fall pregnant again so your wife cannot fall pregnant until the charm that your relative placed inside a womb has been removed we tried to remove it but he felt after we had gone around we were always told the same story that inside a womb my relatives had placed a spiritual why they had placed a spiritual child so that she won't be able to conceive for me my brother life was really difficult yes financially we were okay but that thought of me getting older without having a child it was always giving me a lot of pain that was when my wife's relatives said to my wife it is fine you can come so that we can visit this other traditional healer then we can see if we can get any assistance at all when she went back to zim when she was taken by her relatives 
to that traditional healer during that ceremony whereby they were trying to remove that charm that had been placed inside a womb. It seemed as if the traditional healer who had assisted my relatives was much more powerful than that traditional healer where they had taken my wife to. So she died in the process of them trying to remove that charm and after her death they told me that for me to get married i have to come back to the village and i have to speak with my uncles so that we can get to decide which woman am i supposed to get married to i then said that i am not going to do it is far much better that i stay forever here in south africa those people they made my parents to suffer they made my dad to die and my mother because of stress she passed away i cannot go and sit with those people that made my parents to suffer as for my sisters i do not know if they bewitched them or what because they have become toxic people no matter how hard i have tried to reason with them they just say that you need to come back rather we do not have to speak about this issue on whatsapp why don't you come back home so that we can sit down as a family and resolve this issue but i am afraid i know that witchcraft is real we used to see a lot of things when we were growing up i know that if i go back to that village they are going to make my life to be very bad i know that sometimes they even go to the grave of my grandfather so that they can raise his spirit but so far my ancestors they have been fighting for me because if it was not them fighting for me i was going to suffer so many nights i have terrible dreams but at the end of the day i always see my grandfather standing next to me and if there is someone who will be trying to attack me holding a spear then my grandfather will stand in front of me and he will say that i am here to protect you so i am afraid that if i go back to the village where my father is buried they are going to do some bad stuff on me and if i return back to south africa i might find it very difficult to even find some clients like the way that i am getting them right now